Good morning. My name is Winona, and I'm from Tusuki Pueblo, which is just um, north of Santa Fe here, um, just over the a couple hills uh, right next to the Santa Fe Opera. Um, well, my talk is going to be about um, Peaky Bread, and this is going to be a fast talk on slow food. <laughs> which is a, a, a very much of a contradiction. Um, the story is about 15 years old, um, and we have um, lots of stories um, in between there, so I'm going to pick out uh, some of the highlights um, and some of my favorite uh, parts of this story. The, where I'm going to start is actually yesterday. Um, I had the opportunity to make some of the bread uh, yesterday with my sister, and we had to do some improvisation um, because we didn't have some of the ingredients that we would probably normally have on hand or have prepared for. And so um, we decided, or actually I decided, that one of the ingredients um, that we could probably fudge a little, um, it actually turned out is really important. <laughs> <laughs> and that being said, um, I, I'm talking particularly about the grease, um, the, the oil, the fat that is um, a part of the, the application. And um, I have done lots of research. Um, we don't have any, um, I guess, um, knowledge carriers of that um, particular um, um, cooking in Tsuki Pueblo. And so I don't have a readily person available to go ask, like, what do I do in case of this? So we have been using um, some of these um, exercises to kind of um, test out our, um, our hypotheses. So for example, um, we did not have any brain, which is one of the ingredients to make the, the peaky bread. Um, I had read in several cookbooks and um, several stories um, in this 15-year uh, span that you could um, use cottonwood seed uh, which is an oil that um, was extracted. I have yet to see it, smell it, taste it. I haven't, I've, I don't know where to find it, I'm sure. Um, on the internet, if I Googled it, I could find it. So as I was in um, the grocery store, I was looking at all of the oils that are available now and to find out that there are so many, I decided on a uh, cotton, no, excuse me, a grapeseed oil, which was cold pressed, GMO, it had all the fancy labeling. So I figured this has got to be it. This is going to be, it had a high uh, smoking point and we, and so we went in and we did it. And we noticed that things weren't happening as normally would happen if we had the brain. And so we were, my sister and I were talking, and um, what I noticed that is that um, we had the fire going and we had the, the batter on the stone, and you actually had, I had to be a little bit more patient. I had to go a little bit slower yesterday because, um, the bread, um, miraculously, when you do have the brain, it actually peels off itself. It, it comes off the stone, and you know that it's ready. And so I was sort of impatient and kind of curious of what was going to happen with just the grapeseed oil. So I began to pull um, the bread off of the stone, and it was still adhering to the stone. So I thought, oh, this is a catastrophe. It's not going to work. But I waited a few more seconds and it actually came off the stone. And so I thought, okay, this is gonna work, this is gonna work. And, um, and so we, we did it for two days and on the second day, um, it didn't go as smoothly as the first day. Um, so in thinking about it last night, about you know what had happened, a lot of things um, are a factor um, when you're cooking. Um, this is an outdoor cooking environment, so you have to deal with humidity, heat, wind, um, and even just sort of the temperature of, um, of the stone. 
And so, um, but thankfully, um, I was able to, to pull it off and, and, and hopefully provide enough for everyone here today so you can actually taste it. Um, I'm very fortunate to be able to have this skill and this knowledge because um, we didn't have that um, practice or that uh, food in our community um, even in my lifetime. I've always known it to be um, a bread from Hopi where the, the communities there um, produce this, this bread. Um, so just recently when my parents decided to pursue this as a, um, a, not a relearning, not a, I don't know what to call it. I'm still struggling for, for the word to, to kind of um, come back to, but um, to bring it back into our community so that we can um, provide the food for our own families and our guests um, and the public in some cases. And, and so um, they did that for us. Um, I, my, I'm not the only one that does it. I have uh, three other sisters who also um, make the, the bread in our community. Um, one of the things that um, I also learned was that there was a name for this bread and it was made in our community and is made in various communities um, here in New Mexico. Um, again, as a, a, a pre-contact food, uh, a traditional food, it was you know, something that um, sustained uh, the peoples of here. And um, the, when I was doing some of this research, um, I get very excited about it. And you know, when you don't know things you have, and you don't have a teacher, you have to go out and, and kind of find that information. And one of the funny um, stories is that um, I actually learned this from um, a program called uh, National Scientific Frontier. Um, it's an old program. I don't know if it's still being made, but it was um, produced by Alan Alda. Um, he's the actor from um, MASH, and it's on YouTube, it's online. Um, and he had a program called uh, Superfoods, and he was talking about these uh, grains that sustain civilization. So obviously, in our area, it was the corn, um, in Europe, the wheat, um, in um, Asia, the soybean. And so at any rate, there was, there, there was these different segments and there was one segment where they had interviewed a grandmother in Zuni Pueblo who was showing them how to make um, the bread and they were kind of dissecting it, saying what makes this a superfood and, and you know, they were testing the pH and. Um, all of the minerals and the vitamins that were coming from not only the corn, but the processing of it and then the cooking of it. And so um, I found that very interesting, um, specifically that, that phrase of um, sustaining civilization. So that, that kind of resonated with me and still does. Because when I do make the bread, I think of, you know, all of the, um, the opportunities that happened before and then the opportunity that I have now to actually um, do this um, application and, and, uh, and still learn about it because it's very new to me and, and my family. Um, but you'll, can, if you look for it, you can actually see Alan Alda and the, um, I don't know if he was a chef, but they're actually remaking the batter and they're actually trying it on a griddle and it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> But I commend them for that because they did give me, they, give, they gave me the information that I needed um, at that time. Um, so let's see, um, I'll, I'll kind of quickly go over um, what we did or what we do. Um, the stone um, in Tusuki was um, discovered when uh, some of the homes were being demolished and some of them, they were gonna put newer homes and so there was this old, um, not abandoned building, but a, a, a place in, in um, the village where this, um, this stone lived for who knows how long. Um, I think um, in conversations with our community, um, my dad has kind of pinpointed mid-60s, early 60s as 
possibly the last time the um, uh, bua yawe is the word that my mom um, calls it was made in our village and so um, they they um, provided this they put un unearthed this stone um, and they had seen it they weren't sure what it was um, they asked questions nobody knew and so after kind of figuring out they realized that um, it needed to be sort of um, refinished, if you will, kind of brought back because it hadn't been used for so many years and it wasn't um, uh, cured. It wasn't uh, ready to be to be used. Um, but today um, we we do use a smaller stone that we got out um, in Hopi, um, and you just basically make a cornmeal batter. Uh, with um, an ash application, which actually changes the uh, chemistry of the corn and makes it uh, very digestible. You can pull in all the nutrients from um, this application. Um, it also does have um, a long shelf life if you do take care of it. If you put it, you know, in the um, dry, dust-free, cool places, you can have you can have it for a very long time and. Um, and bring it um, out for, um, for dinner and whatever. Um, you apply the batter to the stone, um, which is heated with a fire, and you use your hands and you work very quickly. Um, some of the um, feelings I get with um, doing this whole application, um, it does take a long time to get ready for it, um, but once I get there and when I have my uh, family members, it's really a great um, experience because we get to talk. Um, time almost seems to stand still. Um, yes, the, the first day we made it, um, things weren't really working out the tail end, so I thought, well, we'll stop here and we'll um, finish, we'll finish tomorrow. And so after I kind of cleaned up everything and I went back to my, um, my parents' house, I was kind of sad that it was over because I still had some batter left. And um, so I you know, thought about it, said, well, we'll try again tomorrow. Um, it's, um, it makes me very happy. Um, I'm always excited when we actually are sitting down to, to make the uh, piki bread. Um, or the buayawe, I should say, and um, I get to visit with my sisters and we get to talk. And yesterday we had a really serious talk. It's actually one of my sisters who, um, you know, we we are we sometimes don't see eye to eye, and so it was kind of I was kind of um, unsure of how our chemistry was going to be that day because you know she um, she does her thing, I do my thing, um, and then. That evening, um, I was uh, reading, there's a cookbook called the Hopi, Hopi Cookery Cookbook. It's just a small little uh, cookbook, so I was kind of flumming through the pages looking for the recipe and kind of reading, you know, the steps because um, they had this little uh, paragraph this, um, of the story, and it was um, talking about the setting of um, piki making. And one of the kind of the last part of the um, paragraph was that it's also uh, an, a time or an area for family counseling. So I thought, perfect, <laughs> <laughs> which was, you know, which was good. And, and so I thought, you know, cause like our talk was all serious and I thought, well, maybe we shouldn't be talking so seriously. We should be, you know, joyful and excited and, and you know, have happy thoughts so that, that can transfer into the food. But I thought, okay, well, that's good that, you know, um, that, that uh, people have experienced that before, have used that setting before um, for that. And so it worked out. Um, some of the, the um, I think we're gonna have the peaky tasting. Um, I just want to kind of explain um, things that you might see in the bread. Um, um, from the first day and the second day, there might be a color differentiation. Um, the first day I made the batter, the second day my mom made the batter. So you can kind of see the, um, I guess the elements that can kind of change a recipe or, and the day, um, the first day we used um, the grapeseed oil and then the second day I actually used, um, uh, I used a combination of the grapeseed oil and olive oil because that's the other fat that we use with the brain when we're processing it. Um, so we were, I was looking at it and you can just kind of see the difference in, in that. But um, I hope you enjoy 
the bread. Um, if you have never had it before, um, please let me know, you know, um, how it tastes or do you have any stories, you know, um, that could help us with um, improvisation sometimes because um, we need to find um, brain and that's a really hard ingredient to come by. So thank you very much.